I'm starting off the presentation talking a little bit about the uh, motivation behind the programming models that we're looking into and uh, starting off with some explicit methods to uh, vectorize your application. So trying to give those programmers the uh, ability in the programming model to be able to uh, take advantage of this um, multi-core SIMD parallelism, this data level parallelism that's present in the processors in vast quantities now. Yeah, so <clears throat> We've been saying for years that people have to parallelize their code, and it's absolutely crucial for the new generation of processors. And in particular, we're talking about the mic processor, uh, which actually relatively simple changes to the code can give over 300 times speed up uh, relative to a serial baseline. Um, and uh, and actually, but what's more interesting is those same optimizations also work very well on the host processor. So people go and tune their code for the mic, it ends up speeding up on the host too. Um, so, anyway, these are very these are crucial skills for developers uh, who need performance. Performance is easily available through uh, you know lots of uh, recent advances, and so this course is about the basics of that. And one of the fun things about it is it's it's really extensions to existing tools, existing libraries, existing languages. So it's not like you have to pick up a new tool set that much. I mean, you can add a couple of tweaks, a couple of directives to a paradigm, and uh, be able to get this this um, immense performance with, with uh, some simple constructs, really. Yeah, and <clears throat> we're also talking about Mike and our, our right of the Xeon Phi. And the Intel Xeon Phi is, you know, has up to 62 cores and, <clears throat> you know, up to 284 threads, uh, as well as 16 wide SIMD. So there's tremendous performance available there. But what's cool about it is even though you have this performance, <clears throat> it's the same program model as the host. So the same exact tools work in both places, both on regular processors and on, on the Xeon Phi. <clears throat> you can get exactly the performance to get uh, exactly the same tools, performance out of Atom, as you can out of, Xeon, uh, out of Intel Xeon Phi. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the cool things. And the other thing, for, for those that are familiar with op the OpenMP parallelism model, uh, that model has been extended with uh, SIMD parallelism now as of OpenAP 4.0. So the neat thing, particularly on Xeon Phi, is that you could create a parallel region and define a section of code that operates on the uh, Xeon host, and then this other parallel region that would normally execute on the Xeon host, you could just put a one pragma in there and say, gosh, I want this to run on the mic. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, and actually, I think OpenMP 4.0 is a major breakthrough because uh, now it has standardized two important things. One is the offload model, so you can move computation to a coprocessor easily just by doing markup in the code. <clears throat> and the second is a standard way to do vectorization. So be able to mark loops as being SIMD loops and have those uh, be vectorized. Um, and this is actually crucial for many, many applications. And because of the now the wider vector units um, in the recent processors, AVX, and the even wider vector units in the Intel Xeon Phi, uh, there's lots of performance to be had from these vector uh, uh, the vector extensions, and now there's a standard way to do it. So we had very similar extensions in the Intel compiler before, and actually, for the most part, the extensions in OpenMP 4.0 are standardization of those, um, and so those skills will transfer right over into OpenMP 4.0. And, and really, in large part, I don't want to <laughs> minimize this point. I mean, uh, you know, it's through engineers like you and through Jim and some of, some of the in, uh, Intel engineers that really worked hard to drive those changes into the OpenMP 4.0 spec and some of the things, the work that you're doing in um, migrating some of that stuff into LLVM and some of these other, uh, at uh, least on the parallelism side. Right? Well, so. yeah, actually you should mention that. Um, so uh, some of this work arose out of Silk, work with Silk Plus. We also talk about Silk Plus, which is another programming model. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so Silk Plus, now we've got implementations in, uh, of course, the Intel compiler but also in GCC and in LLVM, so Clang LLVM. So there's now three compilers that support it. And um, so, uh, so a lot of that, that work ended up migrating over to OpenMP, particularly the vectorization part. What I would say is don't be afraid to just try it, right? Uh, you can look at the spec and it's a big, little, long document, but actually, it's only a couple of pragmas that are uh, immediately useful. You can start there, and you can experiment. You should just go ahead and do it and try it. Um, and, uh, and then you know, you'll be able to get some speed ups pretty rapidly. I also highly recommend um, uh, the, the Jeffers and uh, Reinders book uh, on programming the Xeon Phi. It's 
a fantastic book, not only for the Xeon Phi, but for actually parallel computing and using OpenMP generally. Um, and it's got some really good examples that step you through you know, the most crucial pragmas to get performance. And there's really only two. That <laughs> if I were to boil it down to three things, there's, there's one slide that we have in our talk that kind of gives a quick summary like that. And uh, it boils down to this. The first step is vectorize and parallelize. It's critical. The second step is, after you've vectorized and parallelized, you've really worked hard to get the best performance, say, on your host Xeon system to get that vectorization and parallelization really humming. Then you want to map that application to the Xeon, to whatever the target is, Xeon Phi, whatever the target is. And then the third thing is, is that now you need to separately tune after all those things for that specific uh, architecture. So this is the book I uh, wrote uh, last year, uh, Structured Parallel Programming, which is actually about a set of patterns for doing parallel computation. And it includes lots of examples of OpenMP and especially Silk Plus. Um, and also lots of uh, case studies of various algorithms, you know, k-means, uh, sorting, that sort of thing. So, um, so anyways, uh, these are both available from Morgan Kaufman. And uh, I would, uh, of course, recommend them. Yeah, absolutely. I want to buy your book and have you autograph it for me. I know you need it for the conference, but well, before you leave, I want to get a copy. Yeah. Also available in Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really complicated question uh, because uh, a lot depends on what the operating system supports and the parallel model. And uh, so, for example, on Android, there's requirements to very quickly shut down uh, and go into a low power state. And so that requires various technical issues about canceling active parallel threads and so forth. However, in general, um, on the Atom processor, the same exact tools will apply. So really, it's, a, it's not the processor that is, is the difficult part. It's how it fits in with the operating system and the operating system's own mechanisms for managing threads. Uh, that said, you know, um, all other things being equal, uh, the same exact tools should apply. Um, and uh, in particular, vectorization tools would definitely apply to Atom. So, you know, the OpenMP fragments, for example, for doing vectorization, those should work just fine. Um, and you'll be able to compile code for, um, for an Atom processor running Android, say. And so you could cross compile the Intel compiler, generate vectorized code, and put that in an application. So, um, so yeah. So basically, these, these tools work across the board on a different operating system.